This is Inside Nola's Team, presented by Oshner. When you think of baseball in Louisiana, you think of Ron Maestri. The godfather of New Orleans baseball was the first to take a team in this state to the College World Series. Maestri mentored many coaches and players who have carved their own successful careers, including current LSU coach Paul Maneri and current privateer head coach Blake Dean. This is New Orleans baseball, all in the family. It's the greatest feeling in the world because it's what it's all about. Every W that I was fortunate to have doesn't mean a thing. These guys, they call me, um, the former players. Paul calls me all the time. I talk to Blake two or three times a week. Uh, that relationship, will you can't put it into words how much it means. And uh, particularly when you get older, at least you got somebody calling you to check on you. But it, 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 it's really, it's huge. Here's the pitch. Swung out and hit the left field. That's well hit. Well hit. Well hit. That's off the wall. Tigers win the ball game. LSU did it again. I did not recruit Blake to LSU. I inherited Blake as a freshman. So the previous coaching staff recruited Blake Dean, and uh, and then I was hired. And so he started at the same time as I. But I'm watching him take, we hadn't even started practice yet, and I'm watching him take batting practice. I right, told you this story. You were hitting in those outdoor cages, and I come walking by the cages with our trainer, Bo Lowry, and I watched like three swings, and I said, Bo, who's that guy hitting? He goes, oh, that's Blake Dean, he's a pitcher. And I said, he's not a pitcher anymore. That swing, that guy's gonna end up being an all-conference SEC player. I underestimated him, he became an All-American. He was the best hitter we had on our national championship team. Coach Maneri saw you and goes, that guy's gonna be able to hit. You know, and he gave me the opportunity. And from there, I, I remember very vividly, uh, this is kind of off topic, but started me in the outfield, couldn't throw. I was a very average defender. Then I started moving to the DH role. It's like, you know, at this point, you better hit or you're not gonna play. But before my freshman year, the very first game, my dad calls me and he goes, hey, are you gonna start or you play? And I'm, I, I don't know, I don't know if I'm, they're in Florida. Do we come over, don't we come over? He said, well, call Coach Maneri and ask him. I said, oh, God. I said, I don't know. So I, I called, picked up the phone. Text, I mean, if I texted or called him, I said, Coach, am I going to play tomorrow? And he goes, you could tell it was not the right thing to do. And he goes, I'll tell you this. He goes, don't ever call me and ask me this again. But yeah, you're going to be in the starting lineup tomorrow. <laughs> and so after that, the rest is kind of history. And it kind of just took its own own shape after that. Well, again, they're, they're, they're like spirits, right? They're, they're a lot same in the many aspects and quite different than others. You know, the, the one thing that stands out to me with Coach Maneri is just his attention to detail, right? His, everything he does is so detailed, it's so in order. Kind of what I, every recruit I meet with, I tell their, their parents, when, once you leave college, I didn't know what to do with my time when I left LSU. Everything had been so regimented out for me, everything was in so, so much order that the routine was set daily, right? So, and I tell people, I've asked him, you know, he's told me with, when recruits come in, you know, hey, make sure you go out and look at the field, make sure the baselines are painted, make sure the bases are in, make sure there's not a tractor blocking the dugout view when you come out little things like that to where I would say a lot of coaches may not think about or they may not do but over his course of the time that's what's made him very successful is he notices those things he can go back and tell you every game every pitch every you know scenarios that I don't even remember uh, he's got them stored up there and, and on, the, on the flip side with coach Maestri I got him kind of in the second life I hear he was kind of tough in his first life uh, but I kind of <laughs> got him on the back end of it so I've got to enjoy a lot of uh, conversation with Coach Maestri about just life in general. Uh, he helps me, we, we talk about fishing, we talk about cooking, we talk about baseball. He doesn't impose uh, his opinion on me. If, you know, I go to him and ask him a lot of things. Coach, what do you think about this guy? I need to do this, I think he fits better over there. So he's just a sponge to where I go to on a daily basis, just to ask everyday ordinary questions. That doesn't even have to be baseball related. To be honest, we talk baseball, but we talk more outside of baseball. Like I said, fishing and uh, cooking are kind of our thing. So we talk more about that than we do baseball a lot of the times. When I found Mace, and Mace was my coach, he was the model coach for me outside of my dad. And it was the first coach that I played for that I could really learn from other than my father. And so I took those lessons that I learned from Mace and I applied them to my coaching. And, and when you watch somebody like Blake, who you had for four years as a player and you're very close to, to see him go on and then be successful, whatever walk of life that is. In Blake's case, it happens to be also coaching. And we're, I'm just so proud of him and, and so happy that he's, that he's the coach at UNO, a place that I love, and he's done a tremendous job.